representative for you right now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, do you think that the way you have your HSAs are designed now with the copay structures that you're actually going to send these patients to the emergency room? And I say that because if, if you're, you go to the physician, the patient has a car, it's not, there's no money on the car. Well, where are they going to go to care? Where are they going to go to the emergency room? So we're going to, are we going to flood the emergency rooms with the way the self or HSAs are set up the way it is? Well, the emergency room, if it's not an emergency, the emergency room visit is not covered at all. Right, but, but, uh, the, my, uh, but the emergency room is not returning the patient away. Has exposure. Right. So basically what, what I'm seeing the HSA is we're doing, when they run out of the money on their HSA car, they don't go to their care of the emergency room. They're not going to fund their car. They can get care of the emergency room. You represent for our, I think that well, theoretically your, your concept is, is true. It's historically been true when faced with the full cost of the primary care visit. I need to remind you that the primary care copay is eight dollars. So that so that but you're, you're talking about a population that makes fifty seven hundred dollars a year. That eight dollars a lot of money. But this card is actually this you're card pre-fund you're pre-funding that, that payment. Right, but when that car runs out and they have a lot of care, where are they going to get their care? And this is I think this is part of the concept of the car. If they're paying in in anticipation of care that they will need in the future, the card doesn't run out. The card runs out only when they cease payment. But if you have a high utilizer, high utilizer and I've seen and I've seen this, but that's why I asked, I've seen these patients are high utilizers. They have to come in, they come to me, they see me three times a week, and they have a copay of $8 copay. Okay, now if they go to the physician, and their cards out of money, they're going to go, we're educated, we're trying to educate these people who go buy your problem to use the card right. Okay, now they're going to get educated when they're running out of money, they're going to go to the emergency room. So they care because they cannot reduce care. Of so let me, we're, we're going in a circle, we're trying to come out of the emergency room. Now we're going to implement an HSA that's going to send them to it. Because there, there's no, there's no penalty for running out. So let me make a clarification I think is very important. This is not an HSA like you're describing. This is not a card that if they are participating, ever runs out. Okay, let me say this. It's not, an, it's not a health savings account. It's an independence account that the state is still obligated to buy down the cost sharing reduction. But you, um, excuse me, but you said oh, just a little while ago that when the patient when the patient doesn't fund their card and they have a copay of just what qualified health care plan, that's a $30, $20 deductible. Well, they can't do that. So what are they going to So in the private option, it's not a $20 or $30. It's, we have a lower copay number with the cost sharing reduction. And they will still go to that primary care provider. The qualified health plans are still paying that benefit. They're still paying a discount off of what the traditional copay bill would be. That's true all the way up to 300% of the poverty level in the uh, exchange. The card itself will continue to pay the provider. The card never runs out. Okay, well then how are you educating people? Because they see what the payment is and they have an incentive to manage that, that payment. But if you're going to give me a limited amount of money, you're not teaching me anything. <laughs> you're just saying, I can use my card from now on. This does not... Uh, this does not have the punitive aspect of a full $5,000 health savings account on somebody who's making $5,000 a year, you're correct. The punitive aspect of it is not that, one, you lose the ability to participate in the rollover. You, you right. lose that, and then you go back into the traditional cost sharing, particularly if you're over. But, the, but when you go to traditional cost sharing, and the physician, that's a $20 copay to the physician, and that, 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 that patient learns that I can go to the emergency room because I'm going to pay the twenty dollars. But the but the institution, and again, what we're seeing in the state is the healthcare institutions now are realizing because we're one of the only states that doesn't pay for non-emergency use of the ER. It's, they're, 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 they have the the incentive the incentive as constructed today has been on the hospitals to develop mechanisms to get people to the right care in the right place. Because in fact, we have people who show up at the ER. Right. But that ER, that person going to the, I'm sorry, the person going to the emergency room, that emergency room would still have to see the patient because they don't know they're emergent unless they see 